Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we begin our week with a word from God's scriptures. And today we're going to continue to look at Christ's healing miracles in the book of Luke. And today we're going to talk about the centurion and his servant. And as we start there today, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are mightily blessed in your grace. And to God, we ask in your mercy that you will continue to guide us every day in your word, that we might find encouragement from the examples of the faithful men and women of Scripture, that, dear God, we might always look unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and see not only his goodness, but his love for us. And, dear God, as we face the trials and tribulations of this present evil and fallen world, may we see the light of the celestial city and the beauty of the heavens that await your covenant people. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today, as I said, we're going to go look at Luke chapter 7. We're reading uh, verses 1 through 10 today as we read of Jesus healing the centurion's servant. Now, when Jesus included all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant, who was dear to him, was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving. For he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And those who were sent returned to the house, finding the servant well, who had been sick. Amen. Yeah, I referenced this story in the sermon yesterday morning. And um, one of the beauties of this story is it's a deep reminder of the humility that the Christian life should bring to the heart and mind of every believer. Notice the approach of the centurion here. The centurion recognizes that he is unworthy to have Jesus under his roof. Now think about the reasons why the centurion would think this. First of all, he's a Roman soldier. What do most Jews think about Roman soldiers? They're not very fond of them. We also know that the centurion is a Gentile. And the centurion, who is called a God-fearer in Matthew's telling of this healing, is also said to be one who is well-respected among the Jews. But he understands himself, because he is not a Jew, to not be allowed, in his mind at least, to have someone as holy as Jesus in his own home. And notice here, he sends the Jewish elders to entreat the Lord for him. Now, when we think about this in the context of our own Christian faith and our own walk with Christ, we often can consider ourselves in the same way, unworthy of Christ's presence. And as noted, there is truth to that. We are unworthy to receive the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Christ shows us in this passage that if we are of our Savior, then we are worthy to come to him. 
If we have been washed in his blood, we are worthy to be in the presence of God Almighty. And we see here in what Jesus is laying out to this centurion and witnessing to those around him in Capernaum that there is great faith in humility. There's a great understanding of our relationship with our Heavenly Father that we who are unworthy have been made worthy by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are to approach our God boldly in faith, trusting not only in Christ, but in the love that God the Father has for each and every one of his covenant children. Notice something else that we see uh, going on in this passage. We're told here that he pleads, or the elders plead with Jesus to come and heal his servant. The centurion, like all men and women of that age, had heard of the exploits of Jesus Christ, had heard of his healing ability, and he loved his brother enough to seek Jesus to come and heal him. There's a parallel here with the friends who had taken their, their friend who was on the litter and had dug a hole in the roof and lowered him into Jesus' presence. You remember there how Jesus commends their faith. Because their desire was not only to have their friend healed, but to go to the only place where that healing had any chance of being done. And we are reminded of the call that's on the hearts of every believer, at least should be, to see that our friends who are dead in sin, our friends who are facing illness, our friends who are facing personal trials in their life, that we are to bring them to Christ. Because Christ alone is able to handle whatever it is that is going on in our friends' lives. But most especially, only Christ has the ability to save them from their sin. Earlier on in the book of Luke, we read the story of Jesus and the Pharisees, where the Pharisees criticized Jesus for healing a man. And what does Jesus say to them? Is it easier to say this man's sins are forgiven or get up and walk? And we know that the former is more difficult than the latter. Because only God has the power to forgive sins. And only God has the power to heal any of us of the true ailments that we face because of our own sin. And so this desire to be in the presence of Christ, this burning desire to have Jesus fill the needs in our hearts, is a siren call unto those inside and outside the church. One of the great troubles we face today is a neglect of seeking Christ. We treat Christ almost like an of course, almost as a last resort when things are going bad. And Jesus hears the prayers of his people, even in those straits. But Jesus longs to hear our prayers in joyous times as well as in the dark times. Jesus longs to have us growing in our faith in him, not being satisfied with the milk of the word, but seeking the meat of the gospel and of the law and of the commandments. And we know this is the case of the centurion, because remember what it says here about him. In verse 4, it says, When they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving, for he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. You know, much like uh, uh, Lydia in the book of Acts, you know, the, the rich woman, the seller of purple, when she was saved, what should she do? She used her finances to support the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see here with a centurion that his faith has been proved by his love for his brothers, not just for this servant whom he loved, but for all of his brothers. He built this synagogue, and what was done in a synagogue? A synagogue was the place of worship where God's people went to bring praises unto the Lord. And so we see this love was not just uh, you know, cursory to this one individual, but it was for the whole body of Christ. And as brothers and sisters, we are to love one another with this example of faith that we see here of the centurion. 
That Jesus Christ alone has the power to heal. Jesus Christ alone has the power to save. And Jesus Christ is the one who has enabled this centurion to love his brother and to love his neighbor as himself. And so as we go about our lives during this week and as we uh, face all of the attempts of the evil one to drag us away from our glorious Savior, let us remember the example of the centurion. Let us seek Christ. And let us know that Jesus Christ has the power to heal, the power to give comfort, the power to give encouragement, and the power to strengthen even the weakest of saints. May you be blessed this week, and may the Lord our God guide you in and through all things for his glory. Take care, and God bless.